Hi guys, this is the last instalment of our series of 1.2 and we will be looking at the reactions. We are going to be looking at the key reactions of the alkali metals, how to identify hydrogen gas via the squeaky pop test and the key reactions of the halogens. Group 1 element. Group 1 elements are known as the alkali metals and they all have one electron in their outer shell. Group 1 elements undergo oxidation where an electron, one in the outer shell, is lost and an ion is formed. When the ion is formed, it has a more stable electronic structure, which is like the noble gases. Reactivity increases down group 1, due to the atoms get larger as you go down the group, which as a result means the outer electrons would be further from the nucleus. This then means that the attraction between the nucleus and the outer electron are weaker, meaning that the outer electron can be lost easier. So now we're going to look at the key reactions of alkali metals. So as we said before, alkali metals, so group 1 metals, are very reactive. So when you're exposed to water or air, they react with them straight away. So that's why we always store them under oil to prevent these reactions. Firstly, we're going to look at the reactions of alkali metals with water. So the reactivity of group 1 metals increases as you go down the group. So when they react with water, they phase and move violently around the water, and some of the lower alkali metals can even self-ignite, which shows just how powerful they are. Also, when they react with water, they form hydrogen gas and metal hydroxide, giving them the name alkali metals. You can see these reactions in our lab demonstrations video if you haven't seen that one already. The next reaction of alkali metals is with oxygen. So when group 1 metals are exposed to air, they begin to dull. Although they are usually very shiny, when they're exposed to air, they start to dull, which is called tarnishing, which, which is a layer of metal oxide forming on the metal. So as the reactivity increases down the group, the speed at which the dull appearance is seen also increases down the group. So for example, if we take lithium with oxygen, it forms lithium oxide, which will be the layer on lithium metal which causes the dullness. Lithium floats and will react pretty steadily and will eventually disappear. Sodium, which is below lithium in group 1, reacts a little more violently. At first, the sodium will dissolve until a ball remains, which will then move around the surface. The fizzing is more rapid and the hydrogen gas that is produced this time may burn with an orange flame before the sodium eventually disappears. Now we're going to have a look at the potassium reacting with water. Potassium reacts most aggressively with water out of the metals we looked at. Like sodium, once it melts, it floats and moves around the water. However, as you just saw, it does that at a much greater pace than any other metals that we previously looked at. And the hydrogen gas that is also released ignites instantly, and the metal also ignites, giving a lilac flame, which you could just saw on that clip. Um, as that's the potassium flame color, you would expect a lilac flame. And also, you can see sparks during this reaction. When you add a universal indicator to the water, after all the reactions, you will see the indicator turn the water purple. This is where the metal hydroxide has been formed and the solution is very alkaline, hence why the group 1 metals are called the alkaline metals. We're now going to look at the most common way to test for hydrogen gas. So as you know, hydrogen gas ignites in air. So the most common test for hydrogen gas is to light a splint and hold it near the test tube that you think your hydrogen gas is in. If you can hear a distinct squeaky pop sound made, that means your hydrogen gas is present. Tests of halogens. Iron compounds can be formed through reacting halogens with iron wool. The reactivity decreases down the group, so the reaction is slower or may need specific conditions for it to work. 
when reacted with fluorine. This produces white iron 3 fluoride. The reaction is very fast and not often used by scientists. When reacted with chlorine, this produces an orange brown iron 3 chloride, which reacts with heated iron wool very quickly. When reacted with bromine, it produces a red brown iron 3 bromide. The bromide must be heated and the iron wool must be warm. Finally, when it is reacted with iodine, it produces a grey iron 2 iodide. The reaction is very slow and it must be heated strongly and iodine vaporised and the iron wool heated as well. Halides reacting with hydrogen. So when you react halides with hydrogen, you form hydrogen halides, which can have some very violent reactions, as we'll see in the next slides. So at room temperature, these hydrogen halides are gases, but they can also form acidic solutions when dissolved in water. So we have an example here of hydrogen reacting with chlorine, forming hydrogen chloride, and hydrogen chloride is a hydrogen halide. Reaction between halides and hydrogen. Starting with fluorine, fluorine forms hydrogen fluoride, which will explode in cold and dark conditions. Chlorine forms hydrogen chloride, which explodes in sunlight or in presence of a flame. Bromine forms hydrogen bromide, which reacts vigorously with burning hydrogen. And iodine, this forms hydrogen iodide, but this needs to be heated and the reaction still remains very slow. Thank you for watching. See the next video for the continuation of reactions.